So it was just the work that I put in here and the opportunities that Coach Smith and the offensive staff allowed me to have um, and the say that they allowed me to have. I think that presented itself as more of I was more valuable to keep here than, uh, than maybe to move on. And I believe in what Trent's done. And uh, I think him moving forward, he's going to do a great job as the head coach here. And, and I wanted to be a part of it. Yeah. What's, what's it been like, you know, putting together this, this, this bowl staff and, and how you guys are going about putting together a game plan and getting ready for a, for a game, on, you know, just for a one-game situation? I, I think anything, any culture that has success, it, it revolves around the people involved. And uh, from every one of us that's still around, it's, it's all in effort. And there's nobody that's cutting corners. Everyone wants to help each other. So we got a lot of double up. Um, with both the offense and the defensive staffs. And, and to me, it's a lot of fun because it, it does. When there's adversity and change, it does create opportunity. And, and you're starting to see a lot of guys step forward in roles that they haven't maybe done or been in, and, and they're doing a great job with it. How is the, uh, how's the vibe compared, say, a year ago, preparing for the Vegas Bowl or even the LA Bowl? I think it's, it's totally different just uh, in the way that we're going about, not necessarily our preparation and the schemes that we're using, but just the situation itself is completely different. And, and there is good energy. I mean, you guys have seen it out of practice. There, there's great energy that's taken place. And um, it is a next man up mentality. And, and I think that that's always been the mantra here. you know. And I think that we've done a good job recruiting. And I think that'll continue. And, and these guys are ready to play. So um, we've put a lot of effort into making sure these younger players understand the scheme. So when that their time comes, they're ready to go. And well, having a month helps with getting them caught up with technique. Well, one thing that has been talked about much going into this bowl game is that's different from the other two is you, you just boom right, right into the last two. It was like right after the season. Yeah. Is this when you get time to – I mean, do you find yourself preparing a little bit, just digging into video a little bit more than maybe you were able to do the last two? Or uh, There's definitely more time, absolutely. But our approach was to get the, the game plan done and get it in and then tweak it moving forward from there. But I just think with the, the players that have been not in key roles this entire year, having this time allows us to get them fully caught up and embrace what we're trying to do, um, both offense and defense. And so I think the time has been completely, it's been a blessing to have yeah. for this particular ball game. But as far as the energy, the preparation, you know, we take the same approach and, and uh, we've got a good team that we're about to play. Yeah. You talked me into the game plan. What do you see as the, as the keys for, for you guys on offense going into that Sunday? Uh, it's a it's a good defense. Um, there's no doubt about it. I think Coach Freeman he's done a great job with hiring his staff, and they've done a great job recruiting. And um, Coach Golden, um, he was a tight end guy. You know, he started out his playing career as a tight end guy, but he's been at this a while. He's a 31 year veteran. This is his second year as the defensive coordinator, and they've done some outstanding things on defense and. Um, they are a veteran group. They're stout up front. They're going to try to match you up in the back end, and, and it's shown. I mean, they think they're ranked eighth in the nation in total defense. They're, um, they're second in red zone. They're first in pass efficiency. I mean, just overall, they are a solid group that's going to step up and try to match you. And I think in our conference, the team that is very similar in that philosophy would be Utah. It is going to be a physical team. Uh, not necessarily the scheme, but just that, that physical mindset. We're going to come up and let our players beat your players. So it's um, from the first level. Um, I mean, you got Howard Cross. He's got all America awards. Next to him, another big fella, um, Riley. I think it's Riley Mills. Those two guys are going to be a challenge for us. We've got to make sure that we, we take care of them up front. they got a good edge rusher, number one, Javante. He's their leading sack. Um, leading the team with sacks with four right now. Uh, inside, I believe number eight has opted out, but I'm not certain. He's a solid backer. And then you got 27, who's a team captain, uh, J.D. Bertrand. Uh, he's their leading tackler, and he flies around. Um, and number five, their corner, I think, has opted out. Uh, he was a good, good ball player. He'll have a shot at the next level. And uh, I think their safeties, well, he is. It's not just my opinion. He's been proven to be the best defender this year in college football. He's won, uh, I forgot the name of the award, but uh, that's uh, Watts, Xavier Watts. He's leading the nation in INTs, and he just he shows up on film. And I love, I love seeing guys play the game the way that he does. And so it's a good challenge for us, and, and that's what we want. You know, we, we want the best, and, and we're going to go out and compete and give it our best, and it should be a, it should be a fun show. 
you, you mentioned all the opt-outs. We, we spoke with Coach Hinson yesterday. Yes, he has stuff to say about the continued relevance of, of the bowl games as, as we move into the expanded playoff. And, and he had some thoughts as a guy who had been at the, at the smaller school level and kind of liked that version of the playoffs. You've got experience at that level. What, what are your thoughts on where, you know, division we should go with this level of football in you the know, postseason? And, um, I, I, fortunately, I haven't been the one that has to answer those questions. So my mind is right here. It's tunnel vision, and it's on this team, and it's about the players that are currently playing. And I do think that's been the message. Um, there is you get caught up in the transfer portal and the players that aren't a part of the team or the players that maybe be leaving on both sides of the ball, um, both teams. And at the end of the day, it truly is about the players that are here, the ones that are present and that are ready to go to work. And and uh, and so for me, that's what I try to do. I get lost in ball and I get lost in the players. And, and that is why I'm so excited to be back on the field to where I can have some influence. Um, you know, both on and off the field. Uh, yeah, I went, so when I was at Colorado State, I was a backup quarterback. We went down there and played UTEP, so it was a neat experience for sure. Um, I remember the halftime show. There was there was some low riders rolling around the track. I remember getting hit with a frozen tortilla. Uh, <laughs> so those are a couple things that stuck out. But it is a gorgeous scene, um, you know, and it is one of the traditional ball games. And the history behind it is something that I'm excited to to learn more about and uh, just to be able to take my family down there and, and expose them to a different environment. So, um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to go down and see what the Sun Ball is all about. It's the Tony the Tiger Sun Ball. That's right, so <laughs> Tony the Tiger. Which your tight ends could put away the most frosted flicks? Oh, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know, but I know which one could save a life, and that's Carter Newman. So he uh, he saved our, our quarterback's life on one of the road trips from choking on some food. So it was a good uh, – I don't know which one could eat the most, but I know which one I'm going to bank on if we start having a race trying to put down the most food. So your decision to, to stay with uh, Coach Bray and the staff, it, it sounds like that was a, a fairly – um, easy decision for you. What, what, what all went into that decision for you? Um, I, there's so much, so much that went into it, so many emotions, but I think at the end of the day, my family, since we've been here, we love Corvallis. We love the people that we work with on a day to day basis. And, uh, and an opportunity, uh, it was presented to me. I was talking to another coach in this profession that he's pretty high up in the ranks and, and he was let go this year. And um, I just reached out to him and he said, you know, for me, I'm just praying that I get another opportunity to serve. And it, it made me take a step back and really assess, okay, where do I have the best opportunity to serve others and where can I have the most impact? And I just think with the adversity and the uncertainty of what the image is here, this provided the best opportunity for that. And, and again, my family, we love this place, so we're beefs through and through. You mentioned of being in an advising role before stepping back into coaching now. I guess how has that experience kind of helped you so far in this bowl prep headed up to uh, El Paso? Um, schematically, I, I had a big role in what was taking place here, and, and it was a great opportunity because they let me have that say. And um, So it's from, from a scheme point, being able to teach it, that part is just fine. Uh, getting back out there and being on the field and – you know, you're, when you're in a role where you're not supposed to actively coach, you know, sitting back, I caught myself today. I was like, oh, I can go fix that. <laughs> so, um, for me, that's, that's the, the biggest challenge is just, you know, it's, it's just how fast this time's gone by. But now to actually have the ability to, to get out there and provide somewhat of a demonstration, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a lot of fun. The, the coaches that uh, have been added to the staff in the last month, are, are any, do you know any of them? Have you worked with any of them in the past? Um, no, I have not. Uh, I've, I mean, we've always, this business, it's a small world. So having a chance to, to be introduced to a couple of the coaches, yeah, that's taken place, but not on a personal basis. Um, but that's another part of it. I know that the people that have been brought in here, you know, we all check references and, and what kind of a person are they? You know, are they going to work hard to fit into the culture here and still bring and leave their own stamp on what they wish to accomplish? And, um, you know, everything checked out, checked all the boxes, and I think, I think they're great people and I think they're great coaches.